The Hubble Space Telescope has captivated the globe with images of space and a greater knowledge of how the cosmos functions ever since it was built in 1990. Despite its small size and antiquity, in comparison to the enormous 8 to 10 meter telescopes constructed on the ground, with even larger ones planned in the future, the Hubble Space Telescope is still regarded as one of the best telescopes. Modern research telescopes using optics are often equipped with 2.4-meter Hubble mirrors, which are now in their third decade of operation. But it routinely performs better than several of the most sophisticated ground-based telescopes, with demand for its use and research considerably outpacing the amount of time that can be spent viewing it each year. It is nevertheless regarded as the pinnacle of optical and ultraviolet astronomy. The Hubble telescope travels at 17,500 miles per hour and has already traveled as far as Neptune, the furthest planet in our solar system. It has made almost 1.3 million observations, peering into the past to places more than 13.4 billion light years away. It has contributed to the age of the universe, which is now known to be 13.8 billion years old since its mission started in 1990. It has been found to be roughly three times as old as Earth and has to Pluto moons, Nix and Hydra. It has also helped scientists determine how quickly the cosmos is expanding. Additionally, it has produced a 3D map of dark matter, which is an even cooler development. We could go on and on about Hubble's scientific achievements and discoveries, but the discovery of the 10th planet, which is larger than Pluto, particularly piques our attention. Astronomer Michael Brown from Celtic announced, the finding of a new planet that is more massive and distant than Pluto. The solar system's furthest directly seen body is of 313, often known as 2003 and the fourth brightest Kuiper Belt object, which was discovered by Yale University's David Rabinowitz and Brown with colleagues, Chad Trujillo at the Gemini Observatory on Mauna Kea, Hawaii, and others, revealed that the planet is unquestionably larger than Pluto. Despite NASA's apparent acceptance, not all astronomers agreed with the team's planetary claim. Some even joked about pulling out all your pencils and revising some textbooks. In recent years, Brown and other scholars have suggested that Pluto should no longer be considered a planet, but he went on to say that it would be contradictory to deny even larger planets planetary status if we were willing to grant Pluto that status. Along with thousands of other Kuiper Belt objects, Pluto circles the Sun, a space frame at a distance of 30 to 55 astronomical units from the Sun. In case you're not familiar with space distances, one astronomical unit O is equivalent to 92.96 million miles, 149.6 million kilometers from the Sun. I discussed another object, which was the solar system's most distant object at the time, while seated in this identical space over two years ago, Sedna, a planetoid. He said that this object breaks the record for distance and is just beyond Sedna. Sedna, a planetoid, is currently 98 gold distant from the Sun and will reach a distance of 943 gold by the end of its 11, 500-year orbit. Sedna never approaches the Sun closer than 76 gold. 2003 of 313 has now traveled the maximum distance in its 560-year orbit. 97 AU, or more than 9 billion miles 14.5 billion kilometers from the Sun. In roughly 280 years, it will go as close to the Sun as it can. Why then, at a distance of 38 AU, hadn't it been found earlier? UB-313 has an orbit that is 44 degrees off the plane, in contrast to most planets, which have orbits that are roughly on the elliptical plane 2003. Nobody stares at the sky so far up. According to Brown, we have only been looking that high for these kind of things because, as part of the systematic survey, we have already searched everywhere else. On October 31, 2003, the scientists used the 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope at the Palomar Observatory to scan the new planet for the first time. 
the object traveled so slowly that astronomers weren't even aware of it until they reanalyzed photos on January 5, 2005. It was cold, but not unexpected, according to astronomer Alan Stern at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. It served as the principal investigator on NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto. In a 1991 study, Stern made the assertion that there will be hundreds of objects bigger than Earth that would collide with other objects in the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Comet Cloud. Many myths for everyone who encounters some of these big causes of Uranus and Neptune's axial tilts must still be kept in the solar system's furthest regions. He added that the asteroid belt should also be regarded as a planet because, in his opinion, anything with sufficient gravity to form itself qualifies as a planet. Round ought to be regarded as a planet. Stern thinks that people should get used to the thought that there are many planets in our solar system that the floodgates are now open, and that there will be a ton of these tiny fellas in 10 years. He calls them dwarves. Planet Stern contends that the most frequent stars in the galaxy are cold dwarfs that are considerably smaller than the Sun. Some ice balls, possibly the most prevalent type of planetary body in the galaxy in a conference call with reporters, Brown stated that his team has used as many telescopes as possible to analyze the new planet. In order to obtain a near-infrared spectrum for the announcement, Trujillo then employed the Gemini North Telescope on Mauna Kea, Hawaii. According to early results, this spectrum contains information on the planet's surface attributes. Frozen methane is all on Pluto's surface. Methane ice is an indication of a primitive surface that hasn't become all that hot. Trujillo bemoaned that since the solar system's creation four and a half billion years ago. According to Brown, all of the methane ice would have melted if 2003, of 313, ever approached the sun. There is no other Kuiper Belt object with a surface like that. On the other hand, the new object looks almost gray in color. Pluto is slightly red. In contrast, the amount of light reflected by the planet's surface is limited by its size, and the team has yet to come up with an explanation for this discrepancy. However, even if it only reflected 100% of the light that hit it, according to it would still be as big as Pluto. But no substance is known to be both as reflective and so matte. The object's surface determines how big it needs to be. Of 313 reflects 90% of sunlight in 2003. It would be roughly the same size as a new snowfall on Earth and somewhat bigger than Pluto. In an effort to find the new body using heat sensing, he also calculates that 2003 of 313 is nearly one and a half times the size of Pluto, or roughly 1,077 miles or 2,860 kilometers across. There has been no success with the Spitzer Space Telescope so far. However, astronomers are still conducting research. According to the team in 2003, UB313 cannot have an overall circumference larger than 2,206 miles or 3,550 kilometers due to the lack of a Spitzer detection. The group wants to use the Hubble Space Telescope to view the object as soon as feasible. The designation of the object is temporary at the moment, but according to Brown, his team has submitted a permanent name to the International Astronomical Union, which has authorized solar system nomenclature. He didn't want to share the suggested name until it had received approval. Brown added that it was currently practically overhead in the early morning eastern sky in the constellation Cetus and that it will be visible for the following six months. He also predicted that a novice astronomer in a dark area with a 14-inch telescope and a CCD camera could have found the new item. Without sophisticated technology, it is difficult to study this planet properly given its distance and small size. Currently, there are no plans to send any spacecraft to fly by it very soon. Instead, the mission will be accomplished using large telescopes like the James Webb Telescope, in actuality, this planet is chosen by the James Webb Telescope website. One of its goals would be to monitor tiny things in the solar system to learn more about how the landscapes appear. 
please share your opinions with us in the space provided below.